Balake, where is Balake at? Name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is here. Let's give that another shot, you guys. I'm joined by Clearwater, Florida, Vice Mayor Mark Bunker. Can you hear me, Mark? I, I can. I can. <laughs> it's very exciting. You know, Dan Zeno and his body thetans are always getting into the works and messing it up. I'm blaming it all on miscavige. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, for those of you just joining us, um, this is Mark Bunker's YouTube channel over here at Mark Bunker. Please go over there and subscribe because uh, Mark is going to be starting his re-election campaign for the Clearwater City Council in four weeks. And between his channel and my channel and videos he does and videos we do together, we are going to be promoting his re-election campaign like nobody's business and we are going to raise an absolute fortune because that's what it's going to take um, for Mark to defeat Scientology's efforts to defeat him. Um, uh, why don't you just tell everyone real quick who you are, Mark? Well, I have been uh, speaking out uh, uh, against Scientology fraud and abuse since 1999. And uh, I... Uh, moved here to Clearwater in 2000 to work with the Lisa McPherson Trust, which was a group trying to help people who had been abused or defrauded by the group. Uh, and then, um, you know, I moved back here in 2013 because those two years I was at the LMT were the most fascinating years of my life. Uh, and, uh, you know, I thought I wanted to come back and, and see if I could make a difference here on my own. And part of the reasoning was to eventually run for office, which which I've done, and I won. Uh, so we have to win again. That's uh, that's the most important part. Yeah, absolutely. So um, is it but fair to say? Remember, I'm a, I'm one of those folks who's uh, uh, an outsider who just became fascinated by the entire topic. Yeah. Were Were you as surprised as anyone that you won your election the first time? I was. <laughs> And I, I have to say, uh, at, at that moment, I was sick as a dog. And this is right when COVID had first appeared. And uh, I was convinced, oh, I've got COVID because I've never felt worse in my life. And so I was, uh, you know, I was forced to isolate. That just the day before Election Day, I had to go into uh, the one uh, a hospital in the area that was doing swab testing and everyone was wearing their like astronaut suits, uh, all the doctors and nurses. And it was like, Oh my God, we're all going to die. It's, uh, it's Ebola. Um, and, and so when, uh, when it came time for the results to be uh, uh, mentioned, I, I, it even slipped my mind. I went, oh yeah. They're, they're going to, call those results in, in just a few minutes. Uh, and I, I found out, as I find out a lot of things, from Tracy McManus, who I think called me to congratulate me. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it was an unbelievable evening. I totally forgot that you were quarantining on that day. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was, it was so frustrating because, you know, first time I ever ran for office, I couldn't go and vote for myself uh, and see my name on the ballot. Um, and, and that was uh, that was disappointing. Um, and then people always say, well, why didn't you uh, vote by mail? Well, if I'd known I was going to be deadly uh, serious, uh, uh, ill uh, on that day, oh yeah, sure, I would have uh, voted a few weeks earlier, but I plan to go to the polls. So, so why, why do you think Scientology didn't, because I think you've said before that Scientology didn't really take your campaign very seriously the first time. Why do you think that was? Well, I, I don't know if Scientology didn't take me seriously. I don't think anyone did. I don't think the other candidates did. Uh, the powers that be just thought, well, this is going to go nowhere. Um, and I had a belief in the people of Clearwater that they would come through. Um, it, it was a nail biter. Uh, but this time out is going to be different because this time uh, all the moneyed folks uh, and Scientology, well, well, who's a bigger money folk than, than the cult of Scientology, 
Uh, they'll be um, working hard to make sure that I don't, don't get reelected. Yeah. So, um, so even though they probably weren't expecting you to win, they did, they did go out of the way to give you a hard time during, during your campaign. I mean, I remember uh, watching some of those debate forums, what debates or forums, one of that, they're really more forums than debates. Yeah. And they would send like, I don't know, 20, 10, 20 Scientologists uh, who were pretending they weren't, they're pretending they were just a grassroots uh, you know, organic grassroots thing who, who would, who would shout and jeer and yell, bigot, bigot. Every time you stood up to, to answer any, any question whatsoever. Well, and, it would be the moment I mentioned the word Scientology. That's when they, uh, uh, shout their, uh, uh, messages to me. Right. Right. Did the police not even threaten to remove one of them at one of these forums or yeah, I, at some that? Point, I, I mean, this mostly happened on um, the one forum that was in your neighborhood. Um, that's the yeah. night that um, another candidate's uh, manager, uh, Alicio uh, um, uh, Santana, uh, his manager is uh, this old guy who looks like Doctor Who number three, John Pertwee. Got this big flamboyant uh, white hair, and uh, he was adamantly against me running um, uh, right from the get-go. Uh, I didn't know that he was going to turn out to be Alicio's uh, campaign manager, but I, I ran into him at a political uh, event um, where uh, people of the Democratic Party were getting together to hear from candidates. And, and, uh, and afterwards, he came up to me and said, oh, you shouldn't be denigrating Scientologists. And, well, I don't. I, I don't, you know, talk about individual Scientologists at all. They're, they're good, smart, decent people who are trying to save the planet. I talk about the abusive behavior of the organization and primarily that organization targets the members of Scientology that they're not happy with at the moment. Uh, but he was adamantly against this. And um, so on that night at that particular forum where the uh, shouting started, um, there were a, a group of five to seven Scientologists and they were all sitting with him. And uh, the police actually toward the end were they were called in and they started to try to silence them. Um, I, I was I told them in, in during the, the course of the forum, hey, I'd be able to I'd be happy to talk with you, uh, you know, afterwards. We, we can talk. But they scampered out the door the second that the forum was over. And I heard that they all piled into one car with that campaign manager and drove off. <laughs> <laughs> am i am i making this up i remember someone reporting that that guy was actually seen coming out of the fort harrison hotel does that ring any bells uh yeah well yeah but i, I don't uh, really know anything about that i uh, you know uh, I, I didn't hear that personally i heard it secondhand got it got it got it you know it's funny that you mentioned that it happened to be one of the forums that took place in in, in um one of the meeting halls in my neighborhood, because what, you know, I haven't spoken about my neighborhood association on this channel in a long time. Cause there's been no reason to, but uh, I'm on um, the board of my neighborhood association. And there's a ton of Scientologists who live in my neighborhood. And those Scientologists come to our monthly meetings and they talk to me and they associate with me and they're friendly with me and they know exactly who I am. And, you know, I know because so disconnection gets talked about so much in the press and everything, people think that a Scientologist would be like declared for even talking to me. And uh, and the answer is yes, but only without permission. Like Scientology gives these Scientologists almost an edict that we cannot cede ground to these evil SPs. We have to meet them on the battlefield. And if Aaron's on the board of this neighborhood association, we need as many Scientologists as possible showing up to that meeting so that Aaron can't take this whole thing over. And so out of all the neighborhood associations in Clearwater, it just so happens that 
my meetings are the ones that have the most Scientologists and the forum that happened um, in the same place that we have our neighborhood association meetings. That is where this all went down. I mean, I think the people in the audience were horrified to see this kind of childish behavior from Scientology. Did you get feedback? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There, there was a negative reaction to it. Um, you know, that, that always happens when Scientology tries to pull a, a stunt. Yeah. Um, People weren't thrilled. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think I think it's fair to say that a lot of people in the world think Scientology runs Clearwater. And someone who's watched a lot of my videos might even say, well, Aaron, you're one of the people who's given us that impression because you've talked about the Clearwater political establishment having been, you know, co-opted by Scientology, the corrupting influence of Scientology's money. And I stand and I stand by the statements that I've made about that. But the fact is, it's not like Salt Lake City, where the Mormons actually run the city, like they actually ha own most of everything. Clearwater, I'm sorry, Scientology in Clearwater is so hated and is so toxic and has behaved so poorly as a community partner, not as a belief system, but as a member of the community, as a community partner, has, has sabotaged Clearwater in so many ways. And I don't just mean by their mere existence. I mean proactively sabotaging development and economic activity in downtown Clearwater. That a Scientologist has never even attempted to run for city council because Anyone who has a hist an actual documented history of being in Scientology would have a 0% chance of winning. It's not like Salt Lake City where a Mormon would have an advantage running for office. Would you agree with me on this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yes, I like to, you know, troll David Miscavige pretty hard. And I like to troll the members of the city council who publicly are very weak on Scientology. But I do think it's in Clearwater's best interests for people to understand that Scientology doesn't really pull the strings in the way that most people think that they do. There yeah. is, what are your thoughts on this? Cause there is a chilling effect, right? Like, would you agree with me that the council members seem to be terrified of doing something to overtly piss off Scientology? Is it just me? Well, if, if there was something we could do, uh, that would, um, you know, actually, get the attention of the FBI or the police or the district attorney or somebody who could actually do something. The rest of the council, I'm sure, would, would hop on board. But the you know, for because you and Mike joined me when we went to talk to the FBI, they said, well, you, you give us a piece of evidence. You tell us exactly where we can find uh, the, the, the smoking gun. Um, we will go in there, we'll get a court order, and we'll, we'll raid the place. Um, short of that, no one will do anything, which is, and, uh, you know, the easiest way to, to say, well, I'd like to, but I can't, you know. Uh, nobody, nobody on the council is, um, you know, loves Scientology or what they've done to the city. Uh, our, our mayor... Uh, when I started was uh, Frank Hibbard, uh, a guy that I like uh, and admired. Um, he uh, he up and quit uh, a few months back, but uh, he certainly knew what Scientology was and, and how they acted. Uh, he, um, he back in the mid uh, teens was, um, invited to come and speak at the Fort Harrison at, at the point where uh, Republicans were, were really being courted by Scientology. Uh, I, what's the name of the, uh, the, the woman that they hired who was a big Republican? Um, Mary uh, Repper? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, he was convinced to go and, and speak at the Fort Harrison and they gave him a speech to read he read it and said, no, I'm not reading that. I'll write something of my own. So that night he showed up. He gave them the speech to put in the teleprompter. He was introduced. He came up on stage. He saw that they didn't change it. Their speech was in the teleprompter. And he just walked off stage. And he and his wife walked out of the building. Um, so, I mean, they, they know. 
they know how Scientology behaves. Um, but the, the, the people have become so complacent in the fact that we really can't do anything about it um, that they, they go, why bother? Well, I, I think there's good reason to bother. It, it's uh, only because people like us have been speaking out for decades and journalists have been doing all of these stories that have allowed people like uh, Alex Gibney to do uh, Going Clear on HBO and Leah Remini to do her TV series, which has really educated the public. Uh, I mean, the, the world has changed for Scientology in a very negative way because now everybody knows. Everybody knows that uh, Shelley Miscavige is missing, disappeared by her husband. How, how amazing is that when there was a point where yeah, nobody knew who Zeno was. Okay, sure. But now they know minutia, like Miscavige disappeared his wife. Uh, that's, uh, that's the change that's come about over the last couple of decades of um, people being more willing to speak up and take action. Uh, so we, we have to keep, um, keep working at it, you know? Yeah. Find, find exactly that thing that's going to uh, you know, bring, bring a real, um, uh, not retribution, but real justice to Scientology. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you can be a, an ex president who perhaps tried to overthrow the, uh, the government, uh, and get away with it for so long, but eventually, you know, people will start to say, Hey, maybe we should take this to court. Same thing with Scientology, uh, you know. Uh, All right, well, since you're the vice mayor, I'll make an exception to my no politics rule. <laughs> I didn't name anybody. It could have been any, it could have been any ex-president. Sure. Uh, if, if Clinton had tried this, put him in it jail. Could have, it could have been Frank Hibbard. No. Could, could have been. Could have been. <laughs> okay, so, you know, the thing is, though, like, and I feel like I'm going to, beat this horse until it's most thoroughly dead <sighs> for all of uh, probably the untold millions of dollars that Clearwater Florida has spent on various PR initiatives and everything like this. I, I, I mean, even, even promoting the hell out of their beach, like there's no question that the city of Clearwater understands the role and the value of public relations, right? That's why they fight sure. so hard to get the America's number one beach every year, that kind of stuff. <sighs> Tracy McManus is a very diligent reporter on issues concerning downtown Clearwater politics and Scientology. And if I were any one of these other council members, I would be thinking that part of my job was to do everything in my power to improve the PR of Scientology. And that would include countering the negative PR that people think this is a Scientology town. And yet, the council members routinely give Tracy a reason to write articles that make them all seem like they have no idea what they're dealing with when it comes to Scientology. Is it too much for me to ask for a, like, let's say, for, let, let's say for a moment that the council members really don't know what they can do about Scientology. Is it too much to hope that one or all of them at any given meeting would just say, in their closing statements, I just want to say for the record, I just want, even though it's not on the agenda, I just want to say to the people of Clearwater, we know Scientology is trying to sabotage us. We're just not sure what we can do about it yet. But please know we're trying to figure it out because the world honestly looks at these guys. I mean, look, I, had a, I put up a comment earlier. There's people in London. There's people in England who tune in and watch the council member and watch the council meetings. Yeah, People enough. think these guys all have their heads up their asses and are either paid off or afraid or dumb or ignorant. And it would be so simple just to make a closing statement that like, look, guys, we are sick and tired of being jerked around by the Church of Scientology on fake development deals and stalled negotiations about this or that. I just want to go on the record that we are not under any illusions about what's going on here. Well, uh, tell me why they can't do that. Well, they could do it. Uh, I don't think they feel it's in their 
uh, best interests to do it for one reason or another. Uh, just because most politicians don't get involved in that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's going to be a message um, in, for my reelection campaign that, you know, you need at least one person willing to not be afraid to that's call right. out Scientology. And what would be great is if we could have a council of four members not afraid and a mayor who's not afraid, just like it was when Gabe Casares was uh, the mayor. And just like uh, in the early 80s, 82, when they held a week's worth of hearings about Scientology and brought in people like Paulette Cooper and, and L. Ron Hubbard Jr. to discuss uh, the organization and alert the city to what we were dealing with here. I wish we could have uh, people with a backbone who would be willing to do that. Yeah. Short of that, we need at least one guy willing to stand up and say, I'm not afraid of you. And this is the way you behave. Let's discuss that openly. That's right. I, I mean, the fact that they've been sabotaging our, our downtown, um, first, just by being there, making it a nuclear radioactive zone, and now by buying up all the property and just letting it sit there. I mean, it's just um, insane that they can get away with that. Um, and speaking up about it is is the least we can do. Yeah, The least. Call them out. It's like, I think we probably talked about this in the last video where you know, I, I'm an ex officio member on the downtown development board, which is uh, five out of six of them are, are high level wealthy Scientologists. One of them now is a realtor who did a lot of these deals for the buildings that were purchased secretly downtown and in the marina. So, uh, you know, I made the point recently, uh, you know, <clears throat> you folks up there, you're in the best position to go to these business owners and talk to them up and find out why they're not putting businesses into their empty buildings. And oh my God, you'd think that I had pulled out a gun and said that you got to do this. It's like, are, are, are you insane? Why, why does that seem like an irresponsible question? But oh my God, you can't, you can't mention Scientology at the downtown development board. Uh, and, and, you know, the, their attorney, who is not a Scientologist, called the city attorney to complain about me and my behavior. When really I was being as pleasant as can be. I wasn't being, uh, 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 you know, I wasn't you abusing <laughs> them. I was saying, listen, this is the best thing that, that you could do, and you're in the best position to do it. That is not an unreasonable thing to say. And more and more of the, the people on the council should be saying the exact same thing. Yeah, uh, We should be getting to the bottom. Uh, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. And we're not going to be able to do that if we don't openly talk about it. Yeah. Well, the fact is you are the only one of uh, the, the five member council who is not afraid to speak out publicly. Um, say the word Scientology with it. like, like, I, 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 honestly, some of these people seem literally afraid to say the word Scientology. They'll use euphemisms. They'll talk around it. And then someone's got to speak up and be like, can we just for the record, let everyone, yeah, we are talking about Scientology. And it's like, anyway, so if anything, their, their uh, reluctance to put their necks on the line um, is almost doing you a favor. Cause uh, the fact is you're the only one there. That's why it's so important that we all help you get reelected. I mean, honestly, right? it's just, it, it, it's just mind blowing. Look, one of the things that David Miscavige keeps pitching to the city is that if the city will just sell him this tiny little piece of vacant land behind the Fort Harrison hotel, he will move forward with these grand plans to redevelop and beautify all of downtown Clearwater and bring in movie theaters and bring in Tom Cruise and bring in um, high end retail and steakhouses and all this stuff. And you go, these are great ideas but ideas are worth what you paid for them and uh and for the record that's nothing and recently a high level scientologist carolyn bradham ot8 one of 
the few Scientologists, actually, I will say the only Scientologist I know of who had a successful food establishment on Cleveland, right in downtown. All of a sudden, she abruptly closed up shop, closed both of her businesses and made plans to move out of town. She told everyone it's because she was having a medical crisis with her parents and she's going to move to Arizona and take care of them. Well, some insiders have told me that the real reason she left town is because her Scientologist landlord, Moises Agami, refused to allow her to make some internal renovations that she needed to make to comply with the health and safety codes that the city had found her to be in violation of. So you have Carolyn herself, who's a high level Scientologist and a successful business owner. Her landlord is an incredibly wealthy Scientologist. And between the two of these people, like you have the Scientologist landlord literally chasing out successful businesses, even ones that are run by fellow Scientologists. I just hope the politicians, the other politicians in Clearwater understand Miscavige's promises are, are worth less than nothing. You'd have to be a moron at this point to even consider anything this guy is proposing. When, when if he wanted to do any of these things, he could have done them any time in the last 40 years. And now, of course, he is doing three properties on one block of uh, Cleveland Street downtown. Uh, these aren't owned by Scientology, but for some reason, uh, Miscavige was able to tell these individual uh, members that they need to uh, uh, redo their buildings. And the video they put up uh, about the um, revamp looks exactly like a video that would come from Scientology's in-house video department. Uh, it looks exactly like it's a Scientology project. Uh, and, you know, we're supposed to just pretend that um, everything's fine. Well, look at this. They're doing something nice for us now. Well, who knows what's going to go in there? They haven't said there's going to be a business in there. They, You know, is it going to be empty offices or, um, you know, probably not anything that's really going to be um, productive. We'll, we'll, well find what, out when they get well, that done. <laughs> But here's, here's what's crazy. The only thing Scientology has shown they can succeed at is buying and renovating buildings. Now, those buildings end up empty, but Scientology mm -hmm. is very good at buying and rehabilitating and renovating buildings. So when the city of Clearwater told Miscavige, hey, we'd like you to show us a little bit of a good faith effort on all of these promises you're making. This is how twisted Miscavige is. Instead of understanding that what Clearwater wants is thriving businesses occupying Scientology's empty buildings, Miscavige goes, I've got a brilliant idea. How about I kick the businesses out of these buildings that are operating there successfully and I'll renovate them and make them beautiful? I, I mean, if I was on the city council, I would have been like, you just kicked out more businesses with the justification that you needed to make the building nicer. I've never heard anybody say the reason downtown Clearwater struggles is because the buildings just don't look like they did back in 1950 in the golden age. I've never heard anybody say that. Ha have you heard anyone at the city say anything that makes it seem like they understand the futility of this effort Miscavige is making? Or do they think it actually is a show of good faith? Well, I, I, I do believe they think it's a, a, a good faith effort. Um, and, and I keep uh, uh, warning them, this is just a mirage. They're, he's just trying to say, okay, uh, uh, you did the three buildings and they look really pretty. So here's the CMA property you wanted. That's the only reason he's doing this. And he mm. should not be rewarded uh, he should come through with exactly what he promised back in 2017. And I dug up Tracy's very first article about this downtown redevelopment that Miscavige uh, came up with. And in that article, he's talking, he, he actually says, this is my idea. This was my plan. I talked to all the Scientologists here and we, we, we all, you know, bought these buildings up and we're going to put businesses in them and it's going to be spectacular. Just give us that piece of property first. And then we're going to have this, uh, this guy from uh, Tampa who is a recruiter for businesses. He'll be busy 
putting businesses in every single storefront. Well, yeah, why don't you show us your good faith effort by having them do that right now? <laughs> Have them book businesses into these buildings. Allow businesses to open. Stop yeah. standing in the way and prove that you really are serious about this. I also heard uh, allegedly that Agami is is asking, you know, one business for $750,000 up front to be allowed to put a, a, a business in one of his buildings. And, you know, who's taken that gamble? That, wow. uh, you know, who knows what, what's going to happen when you see the same guy is only doing month-to-month -month leases and other buildings. So... It's unbelievable. It's absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Um, a, a few questions in the queue here. Matt Elliott wants to know, Mark, are you able to run for mayor after your two terms on the council? Yeah, I would be able to. I got to tell you, with eight years by then, with eight years of city council business under your belt, I dare say you would certainly be qualified. Oh, well, I, I believe you're correct. <laughs> one um, time frank uh mayor hibbard slipped uh and when um when he asked the next person to to speak he'd say council member bunker council member you know and, and one day he went mayor bunker <laughs> I went, well i like the sound of that <laughs> And didn't he and say something he like, you can off. have the job if you want it? Didn't he say he was already pissed off, right? No, no, that, uh, not on that. No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. um, all right, let's see. There was a, I saw this one. Uh, anyone else here participate in Operation Chronology? Wasn't it channel? It, was it Chronology or Chenology? Yeah. Chenology. Okay. And, and that, uh, that, that is what they called that the anonymous movement uh, about Scientology, right? Right. Okay, okay, right. okay. So do you know this person? Uh, is this a screen name you're familiar with? I, I, doubt, I actually can't read it. I can't oh, read anything fine. without these. Okay. All right. That's all right. Hmm. All right. Lisa Cunningham says, what pisses me off is all the empty buildings that could be used by the whole community not sitting vacant. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everyone's main beef with Scientology at this point. Yeah. As far as a community partner, is there? Sure. Just, yeah. I mean, we could uh, uh, we could allow uh, a theater troupe to take over uh, a building and do theater in a storefront. Um, we could uh, do a lot of different things to bring some life down there, uh, but uh, it it doesn't get allowed. You know, yeah. it's it's like uh, oh, this is impossible. There was one woman who wanted to um, put together, I think, a little school uh in one of those buildings and uh, she unfortunately said the word scientology at the downtown development board and they gaveled her to silence immediately uh, i remember, remember that? that yeah yes and um i just the, the the thick irony of a board called the downtown development board being manned manned up by a bunch of Scientologists who are the reason there's no downtown development. Like, I mean, it, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. And, and you know, if, um, if it was manned by entirely Scientologists and we had a thriving downtown, that'd be fine. Exactly. You know, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. If they were actually, you know, conducting business and, and, and actually being good neighbors yeah. and bringing in some income for the city, to kind of counteract everything else that we've gone through for the decades. Yeah. That'd be fine. Uh, you know, I, I, I always said nice things about Agami until, you know, this past year when we're seeing these troubles. Exactly. Okay. Selena, uh, let me figure out how to pronounce this last name. Kemwar is what I'm going to go with. Mark, would I be able to attend a city of Clearwater public meeting as a visitor? I'm not a resident, but I will oh, yeah. be visiting the city and wondering what the rules are for who can attend. Yes. You don't need to be uh, a Clearwater resident to speak. Uh, if you come to our Thursday night uh, meeting, we allow citizens to uh, come to the microphone at the beginning of the meeting and they have three minutes to talk. You don't even have to be an American. You can come over from Switzerland if you want and, uh, and Europe or, or whatever. Uh, but 
uh, the idea is everyone has the, the right to speak. Um, so please come and visit. Share yeah. your thoughts. And even if you don't want to speak, you can just come and watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Apostate Alex asks, question, Mark, what has the relationship been like between the city and Scientology's architecture firm, Gensler? Has there been much dialogue? Well, that I don't know. I mean, uh, the, the work that they do for Ms. Cabbage, um, it does not really go through us, except uh, I'm sure the planning department approves um, the plans that uh, are submitted, just like uh, any other project that goes up. But uh, I, I don't believe we have any complaints about um, the firm that does the work because they appear to be a solid company. I mean, you look at the buildings they they put up, they're, they're attractive buildings filled with uh, fraud. Exactly. It's not, but that's not uh, the, the uh, uh, problem of the, the folks who actually constructed the building. Yeah. All right. So a Dissel B O says we should all pitch in and buy Miscavige a copy of Dianetics to help him communicate better. That, that's an idea. Uh, Hill 10 Fap, a.k.a. C.O. Bilf. His words are wise. His face is beard. Comrade Bunker is the rightful chairman and paramount leader of the Tampa Bay Markabian People's Republic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, we'll put that on a postcard for your campaign. Thank you. L Lauren S. Mark, thanks so much for your work. In many ways, it is a thankless job, and I would imagine in Clearwater even more so. Keep fighting the good fight. Well, I get a lot out of, out of the job. I mean, I, I, I enjoy it. You know, the Scientology stuff, that's just a hobby. I, I'm happy to take them on. Uh, but, but I enjoy, uh, you know, every aspect of the job. And I just came back from a three-day conference in Orlando with, for the Florida, uh, Florida League of Cities, um, where, you know, Clearwater is, is part of this uh, organization where that, that helps um, – other cities to grow and, and does a lot of um, uh, work at, at the state level, trying to get some changes done for ourselves. So it was an interesting conference. Uh, I never come away with great solutions to things. I went to affordable housing uh, seminars and, and things about, uh, you know, dealing with there. There's things that you really don't think about, like home rule is a big thing where the state supersedes us on a lot of things we can do. People complain that on the beach, you got all the Airbnbs buying up properties, you know, putting in party houses, taking away affordable housing there for workers on the beach. Uh, and what can we do about it? Nothing. Because the state has laws that say it's out of our hands. And that is incredibly frustrating uh, on a number of issues. Uh, but it's, it's always interesting trying to work on these issues and see what we can do to, to make life better for people. And, and, you know, I enjoy that. I got a question relating to this. So, you know, your first time round, you were running, um, well, to be at least someone that knew what the hell was going on with Scientology. Um, you were also running cause you felt like it was the right thing to do. And you were pretty open about the fact that you weren't the most well-rounded candidate on all of the all of the issues, but you were there to learn. Do you feel like you've been able to do that over the last four years? Yeah, uh, I, I um, believe I have. Uh, and I have met people in the community, not enough people. Uh, there are still uh, a lot of sectors of the city that um, I have not visited. Uh, I was reading an email from somebody uh, just a couple of days ago saying, I think there's one person on the council who hasn't even visited our neighborhood on neighborhood Day," And I have a hunch it was me <laughs> because the first year, uh, every, every year we have one day where we uh, rotate around to the different neighbors, neighborhoods to say, hi, I'm council member so-and-so and answer questions. And we spend like a half an hour at each neighborhood and get whisked off to another neighborhood. Um, the first, uh, first year COVID was ongoing. So there was no neighborhood stay. The next year I had, uh, had some heart surgery. So I was in a weakened state and I went to the first uh, uh, 
thing, first first stop, and it was clear that I could not continue. So they escorted me home. And then this past uh, this past uh, neighborhood stay, uh, the city put together a um, uh, a route for me and said you're going to these neighborhoods. And uh, it, I so I didn't hit their neighborhood yet. It's not because I don't care. Um, uh, in fact, I'm going to you know hunt them down and go to uh, one of their HOA meetings and and talk to them then and and see what more I can do. I don't think you need to actually visit the neighborhood to care about the problems they're having. Um, and uh, I'm always happy to address any situation that comes up. That's great. Uh, JW says, sent you an email. Scientology is good at buying and repairing buildings, so they don't need tenants because of the reinsurance company can carry everything. Plus, could be front-running insurance costs to Scientology-related tenants like Uncle G, who's Grant Cardone. So I do remember seeing an email about the insurance issue. You know, Scientology owns all their properties outright. They don't have any mortgages. I don't know that insurance issues or insurance loopholes have anything to do with their strategy. Um, but... But I, but, but I get what you're saying, and I'll take another look at your email. Thank you, JW. Uh, Donna McDowell, thank you for the super sticker. Courtney Youngs, my first live with A.A. Ron. Uh, thank you for what both you do. Keep up the fight. SPTV forever. Um, <clears throat> Mark, when, when, when people in the community do talk to you, is Scientology what they mostly want to talk about, or is it just all of the issues? Well, I, I, I mean, it depends. Um... You, you went at uh, a lot of folks want to talk about Scientology because they have not had anyone else to talk to about it. But uh, look, we have a, a, a new uh, CRA district going up in the North Greenwood neighborhood. We're trying to take care of some blight and, and make lives better there. So when I'm there, I'm talking to the folks who volunteer at the free clinic or just a couple of weeks ago, I took a tour of the Homeless Empowerment Program. They have eight acres of amazing services. And this is a group that does everything right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of budget limitations, they, they uh, address the problems of homeless families and vets. So other individual homeless people, there's no room at the inn, which is always the case everywhere. Um, and it, it's shameful. But seeing all the things that this group does well, how they have job fairs there. There's job training and monthly job fairs where uh, people, at least five people a month, get uh, jobs out of it. And they all start at $17 an hour. And if they're living there for free while they're getting back on their feet, that's a good way to get started. So uh, I am happy to help these folks in any way possible. Um, so, uh, you know, some, pe some people don't want to talk about Scientology at all, and I'm fine with that. There's no reason we have to talk Scientology all the time, although I'm always willing to discuss it. Right, right, right. I mean, of course, Scientology is going to continue to try to paint you as nothing but a single issue candidate, but most importantly, a bigot, a bigot. It's, it's amazing when you point out to people uh, that, the abuses you speak out against regarding Scientology, you are actually advocating for on behalf of the Scientologists. Yeah. So they're the ones who are being abused. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I keep pointing out I'm fighting for you. Uh, and, and there are folks who have been in my videos from 20 years ago who have left, who have contacted me to say, thank you. You were right. Um, uh, one one uh, who wasn't in my video but uh, uh, encountered us during the LMT years was David Miscavige's niece, who mentioned in her book uh, how odd it was that we would be out protesting in the street and Scientology would keep them behind closed doors and shutting the blinds so they couldn't see any of the entheta that was going on there. And this was really bugging uh, uh, the, the niece. And I, I can't think of her name. Right Jenna, now. Jenna Miscavige. Okay. Okay. And uh, 
she wrote in the book, you know, that was the only half hour where I could be with my Scientologist boyfriend as we grabbed a bite to eat uh, in our long, busy day. That was it. And now we couldn't go out there because they didn't want us to see something that was too scary for us. I mean, why are why do they have to hide? What's Scientology afraid of when they've got the tech to handle anything? It's true. So that kind of dichotomy raises doubts in in people's minds and and plants a seed to uh, actually grow into um, some serious concerns uh, and thoughts of leaving. Yeah, it's true. It's true. All right, everyone. Uh, one more time, I want to show you Mark Bunker's channel at Mark Bunker. Mark Bunker. <laughs> Go and subscribe. We are going to be doing a lot of videos. I mean, during campaign season, I truly believe Mark and I will be able to do one video a day, even if it's, hey, what happened today in the campaign trail? And I'm, I'm gearing up my studio right now. Um, so uh, I will not have the technical, technical issues that uh, bothered us this time. Um, and it, it uh, it's going to be fun. Awesome. All right, everyone, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks to everyone who watches until the very end. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click.